What are the main differences between millennial Asian Americans and Gen Z Asian Americans? Has anything really changed? Yeah, we got to talk about it, Aaron, because generational wars are always a thing on the internet right now. Gen Y versus Gen Z versus Gen X versus baby boomers. Does Gen Z complain too much? Did the baby boomers sell out the future to the corporations? But we're not going to be talking about today, Andrew. We're going to be having a more internal Asian American community version of this comparison between uh, millennials and Gen Z. Yeah, so please hit that like button and let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoy our commentary, also comment down below whenever you uh, feel like you want to. Yeah, so real quick, Andrew, millennials are described as anybody born between 1981 to 1995. Gen Z is 1996 to 2012. And uh, yeah, Andrew, we gotta talk about it. Has anything really changed or not because i say this 20 years it's a long time and it's not yeah and i feel like millennials and gen z those are the two groups that are heavily on the internet now mm. so they're kind of going at it at least in the meme section and obviously not really in person but i do feel like that they're always trying to point out the differences because millennials kind of was the first generation to kind of bloom into the internet and gen z pretty much grew up completely on the internet. Yeah, so Andrew, I got some quick questions here. Are Asians in 2023 more Pan-Asian than the year 2000 or less? What do you mean Pan-Asian? Like more united as in like, oh, like, okay, you're Filipino, you're Korean, you're Chinese, you're Cambodian, like we're all together. Right, right, right. Um, are, are we more together or are we more split apart? And I think my answer is like both. Because I want to say that it's lacking sort of the blind Pan-Asianism of the past, but people know about each other more, so they're more into the minutia. So I guess right now they're, they're talking out their differences. I mean, people are definitely more educated on other cultures nowadays, but yes, there was a time when it's almost like you just needed each other yo, so badly, yo, you did not care. Yo, you might have not even known anything about yeah, it. You're just it was, like, man, we on the same squad, man. man That's was, how we riding. It wasn't about <laughs> flags. It was just about needing each other, yeah, for community. I under what? things are better about the past and what things are worse about the past you know i think uh like we said previously i kind of miss that blind and some people say it's good or bad in a blind way you know the azn pride days with the sticky keys versus the whitewash thing mm. uh I, I felt like there was just two camps you fit into back in the day and now there's like way more colors yeah. like you know what i mean there's way more nuance to identity and and mixtures and hybrids yeah 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 um, moving on, Andrew, um, what has generally stayed the same about Asians? I feel like Asians, would you agree with me, are still into cutting edge gadgets and products? Always been nerds. Yeah. Probably always will be for a, a long time, man. Well, most of the gadgets, they're made in Asia. Yeah, and it's not even that I think Asians will always be the biggest nerds, but like in general, they'll probably always be as a group on average nerdier than everybody else. Right. Um, Andrew, always huge collectors of things, but I think instead of Gundam and Pokemon cards, what is it? Is it just different now? Is it Bear Bricks? What are the kids? The kids are collecting things, but different things. Oh, that's a good question, man. Let I'm us know in the comment sure section below, what right? People are collecting now. I guess, uh, pop, uh, pop. uh, what are those called? NFTs? Nah. Yeah. Um, I still think the pressure is there to be a good student and secure a good long term career. Yeah. I, I don't think Asian parents' philosophies have changed completely. I think, uh, they're probably a little bit more westernized, more understanding now, the younger ones that are 50 years old and versus the older ones that are 75 years old. Would you agree that the parents now, let's say Asian parents are 50 to 55, they partied more than the Asian parents who are 75. I think they had more social lives, yes. Yeah, I still think that people are actually in the soft R&B, hip-hop, EDM-ish mixing of all three of those yep. genres. Even after 30 years, Andrew, here's a clip from Akina, California, there's a party going on in every corner. That's why you gotta be in California. And uh, now here's like some Keshi. I'm just saying, does it sound like some feelsy EDM, R&B, hip hop, techno mashup? The AZNs like the soft R&B, that is not changing. It didn't change for 30 years. Um, Andrew, uh, point number four, I feel like the Asian world sort of got so big, there's less need for Asians to reach out to other communities to get certain things that they want. Agree or disagree with me? Because I'm saying the Asian bubble is more like fleshed out. I'm not saying there's not people reaching out to other communities, but there's not a need to if you don't yeah, want to. Yeah, I mean, like you mean in a city that used to have one Asian, dedicated Asian club night per month, now there's like an entire Asian club dedicated to Asians that's open all the time. Right, right, and you could just go to that club 
all the time to the point where, you know what I mean? Like, you're not yeah. going there uh, just waiting for that Thursday. Yes, yes. Um, point number five, Andrew, I think the biggest difference that stands out to me is the parent situation, money, and mindset. There's a lot more Gen Z Asians who grew up with parents who had a significant amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. Which means they're further from the hardships of a poor immigrant experience, a refugee experience, war stories, or whatever sort of, like, terrible situations that, I guess, typified a more previous wave. Mm. Um, I would say right, so right now, it seems like the people with money, like they want their kids to be smart, but like girls who get into an Ivy League school, they might want to be like an ABG baddie while going to Cornell or UPenn too. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's almost everybody, but I think Asians are are maybe taking advantage of the internet the most. Right. I'm not saying white white people were kind of been doing that though. Like, you know, like the Winklevoss twins, how they're like, oh, we are the Winklevosses. Like we go to Ivy Leagues and we are like so buff and tall. Um, I, I do see a lot more Asian guys that were, went into comp sci or med school that are also like amateur bodybuilders. Yes. A lot of buff Asian guys now. Um, I would say that Asian parents are less strict about soul crushing things. They might be like, you know what? As long as you're doing good in school and you uh, have a good career, I don't really care if you smoke weed. Right. Or I, I care, but not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think that they've, uh, I, I call it the SoCalification of everything. You know what I mean? Like maybe trends that were existing in SoCal like 20 years ago, but all the other Asians growing up in other parts of America were still still traditional. It's almost like where SoCal was at. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's like catching up with everybody. And uh, just in general, Andrew, tell me if you agree or disagree with this. There's a lot more culture being produced in 2023, but it still seems like stuff from the 1980s and 1990s was considered way more better and classic. A lot of the style is still stuck around, man. It's still Dunks, Air Force Ones, Vans, Chucks. Right, you're Air saying Maxes. even like New Balance 550s, they're designed to look like they're from the 80s. Everything is supposed to look classic. Everything is supposed to look like the best thing from the 80s and 90s, and people still want that. Andrew, New Jeans, they describe their aesthetic as Powerpuff Girls Y2K. Yeah, I mean, even Jeans. Jeans are just from that era, too. Yeah, we got to talk about it, guys. Anyway, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Andrew, uh, point number one, Asian snacks are way different nowadays because the older generation, millennials, they had access to Asian snacks, but not hot snacks. Like, you know, like the Korean corn dog or things like that. No, no, like Asian ice cream shops. You had to get Asian ice cream from the grocery store and then bring it home and eat yeah. it, but you couldn't go to an Asian ice cream shop or a Korean corn dog shop on the street. Right, I mean, now there's boba everywhere. Boba shops used to be like only powder. They were only like one certain style. Now boba shops are super luxurious and advanced and futuristic. Oh, Andrew, there's Viet boba shops, Korean boba shops, Indonesian ice chendol teguk boba shops. Mm -hmm. um, I think people used to call it PMT, Pearl Milk Tea, BBT bubble. But uh, I feel like in 2023, would you agree with me? Everybody just calls it boba. I think boba is the term now. It's officially like it's bubble tea. You could still use it, I think, as a search term. But like it's if you're Asian, you, you got to be calling it boba. Andrew, what happened to the Asian Froyo trend? I mean, at least it was Asian owned. We're talking about pink berry, red mango. That whole thing died out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, trends, they come and go. Andrew, now it's on Asian soft serve ice cream, Asian gelatos popping. Yeah. I mean, I think that the uh, Asian IQ for like flavors has just gone up. Everybody's been like everybody, even non-Asians. At least if you are into dessert and into food, you've been exposed to Asian flavors by now. Right. Um, people were talking about how Japanese used to have just hard, dry candies. And nowadays, if you are in a mall in a major Asian uh, area in America, you can find Japanese Royce luxury chocolates. You know that mm. brand Royce that came all the way from, I believe, Tokyo? Oh, uh, People said the older generation of millennial Asians had to eat white rabbit candy. Now it's been reinvented as like white rabbit candy, ice cream, or Swiss rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, point number two, Andrew, games are different. Like we said earlier, Asians like games a lot. Would, do I, I would say Asians arguably love gaming the most in the whole world, right? Yeah, I would say so on average. Um, Andrew, it went from Tamagotchis to Digimons and Neopets, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now it's being replaced by a variety of different mobile computer console games. <laughs> what, yeah, Farmville I, to, to, to uh, Maple Story? I mean, to, I, think, I think you got to talk about StarCraft going into League and now League into... Uh, Valorant. Uh, Valorant's a shooting game, so I... Uh, right, right, right. But, like, uh, what's the, the other... other ones? Overwatch, I don't know, man. Ah. Um, Do you feel like Asians were always PC-centric, though? Because I remember people at church used to play NBA 2K on computer, and I was always like, what? You guys playing basketball games on computer? Yeah. Um, One thing that stayed constant, Andrew, the love of Smash Brothers. Yeah. 
Ever since Smash Bros. came out, I think people still play it, man. Yeah. Um, I think collecting things, Andrew, do you think people in the younger generation collect Gundams like the millennials did? I'm not saying all millennials did. That was a little bit of us. Yeah, yeah. I think Gundams are kind of out, but then maybe pop figurines are in. Bear Bricks? Yeah, Bear Bricks. I'm trying to think of something that's particularly Asian, but like, I don't know, maybe plush toys or... NFT, I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. Point number three, Andrew. Asians used to take Cephia filtered photos at the mall or those little photo booths, but now everybody's got everything on IG story. Um, but also Polaroids are trying to make a comeback in 2023 too. Yeah, I think Polaroids are still fun, man. If someone got it at the party, I think it's always kind of fun to bust that out. It's like a little... Uh... Like we said, yeah, classic. Get a little Urban Outfitters with it. However, Andrew, most people are saying that you just put a digital filter on your iPhone photo or, your, you know, Android, Google Pixel. Um, Andrew, what about JDM? What do you... Is JDM do still... Be, do in? people even use this term anymore? I they, feel like they, they, they do, but I noticed that a lot more of the cars, like, for example, the 2024 Integra Type S, Andrew, they just come souped up when you buy it. Yeah. You don't have to do the body modifications anymore. It yeah. just comes like that... Like I know just, there, I know there's still car shows going on, and I know that there are still import models, but I just don't know if it's like only based because I think now like BMWs have made its way more into the car scene versus in the past it was only import like Asian. Uh, I see Japanese a lot of imports. Asian guys that that made it in business pulling up in like Ferraris and Lambos now too. To those events. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Andrew, somebody had an interesting point. They said that when the Fast and Furious 2 Tokyo Drift came out, uh, the import tuner scene was 70% Asian, 30% everybody else. And nowadays, it's probably 80% everybody else, primarily Latino, with only 20% being Asian in 2023. Yeah, no, I think a lot of Latinos love the Fast and Furious series. Hey, man, they, they do it in real life, too. Well, they also love family. Yeah. Uh, point number four, Andrew. Asian representation changed a lot. Uh, for a lot of millennials, Andrew, they used to only seeing Asians on MTV on real world. A lot of Korean girls were on real world. Mm -hmm. And also one of the uh, MTV VJs was Su Chin Pak. Yeah. And um, one of the only comedians back then was Margaret Cho. But obviously in 2023, there's almost like an endless list to the point where your average person, Andrew, Asian American, can't possibly know everybody. I think we know everybody because we work in this field. But I'm saying other people... They're starting to get people mixed up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it used to be so much of like Asian watch, right? Anything you'd see and then you spot an Asian person, you're like, oh, who's that Asian person? What are they doing? Right. In the Gillette commercial, it's yeah. rare, right? Who are they? Like, oh, they're in real world. Oh, who's that girl? Or who's that? Uh, what are that? What is that guy doing? What is that? That guy's in the background. He has one line. It, it was he? it was like, where's Waldo at that time? No, it was like at that time, John Cho. Everybody knows John Cho as like this older dad from uh, Searching, right? Uh, but now, but you know, we knew him. Uh, we saw him at uh, uh, Better uh, Luck Tomorrow as as Milf, the Milf guy. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, what is that? American Pie, right? Yeah. People were talking about how it went from VHS to VCD to DVD, and now obviously everybody streams everything. Asians were some of the original internet bootleggers on Napster, Morpheus, and other torrent sites, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's sort of t the technology changes every five years. Um, is it true that Asians are still subscribed to a bunch of things that Western people don't know about, whether that's Crunchyroll, iTalk, BB, crack media apps that I cannot legally even discuss on this channel? Um, people were saying back then, Andrew, everybody had to dub over Japanese anime and HK movies in whatever in language. But nowadays in 2023, Korean content is easily the biggest slice of the content. Yeah, pool. I think one big difference now is that Gen Z Asians are heavily more influenced by Korea and K-pop mm. because it's so much bigger now. So I I think that's the one kind of overarching Asian culture and Asian media wave that has really like swept Asian America or just Asians worldwide, I would say. Yeah, I you would know? say in 2000, it almost was like Filipino more because they had that group like Panay and like All for One and yeah, stuff like that. And then just, I feel like in person, the Filipinos were just like, they were dancing more and things like that. Uh, and then singing more. They were Dante the first, Bosco. Like, first cover artists, things like that. But yeah, I think be, the the as far as coming from Asia, it's the Korean wave. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Korean wave impacting Asian America heavily in 2023. Heavily, yeah. Um, point number five, Andrew, online discussions are different. Back then, it was on Zanga, Asian Avenues, Friendster, but not really. Soompi, all K-pop had really active forums. There was a bunch of random forums dedicated to Asian issues on obscure platforms that don't even exist anymore. Mm. Um, MySpace never really had much substance. That was for like the... 
you know, kind of like just cool, good looking people, right? You know, didn't necessarily need to tequila. say. Tequila. But there were, oh, that's funny. And there was a bunch of other obscure ones, Dead or Alive, Solid 07. Those Yo, were all pretty niche. I remember I slid into my very first DM that I slid into was a girl from SF over MySpace. And I found, I just thought she was cute. This is like before Instagram, obviously. Right, this right, is MySpace. Right. No, people would slide into people's DMs in, in Yeah, uh, and MySpace. I messaged her and I had no idea because I had no plans on going to SF. I didn't have any money, man. We weren't taking trips that we didn't have family in SF. Right. So what was I thinking? But I just like messaged her because I thought she was cute. And uh, we just chatted a few messages, and then that was it. But, hey, but, shout out to the girls from California, though, from the enclaves. They were always down to talk. They man. were more engaged because I feel like they were overrepresented from L.A. and the Bay. That kind of culture, there was a lot more of them online. Right. So as a guy from outside of there, I'm looking at them like, like I'm looking at all the cute girls on MySpace. I'm like, oh, they're all from uh, California. They're all from California. That, that's what I'm saying, man. The so calification of everything, it man. Was, but they've was, been it had was. it for like decades out there. Um, a lot of AOL chat rooms, people saying ASLN N was for nationality. Um, somebody said, yeah, people used to ask people to cyber. That's crazy. <laughs> We want need to talk about that. Nah, I, so, I, we used to do that as a joke, <laughs> though. Somebody said uh, that you had Facebook when young Americans actually used it. That sort of transitioned now into Twitter, uh -huh. Reddit, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you're really on the the writery crowd, you might be on Medium. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Um, people in 2023 sort of float, throw up their flag in their profile, or maybe just denote what ethnicity they are, but they don't include it in their screen name anymore. Like the sticky keys, the XXX, AZM, B boy, baby, angel, angel, baby, AZM, right. angel, like, baby. Right. Like nobody's Instagram handles like AZN boy or like Kamai girl. Like, the, but they'll show the flag. Like right. you want to rep the flag or like, yeah. Um, Unless you're Asian. From a Latin American country, then you have you put like Chinese in your name. Right. You're like right. Chinaman like 89 or something. <laughs> or Mr. Chin. Yeah, Mr. Chin, like or uh, Chang, that man Chang. Right, right. I don't know. Like, you know, I've just seen them all. Um, point number six, Andrew, representation in music. Um, in hip hop, Andrew, people only had, if you were really into it on a hipster level, Andrew Mountain Brothers had one track called yeah, Galaxies back in the day. Jin got signed to Rough Riders. But of course, on the internet, Andrew, regardless of all that, there was always the AZN Pride music from uh, the, the, the song Asian Pride, but also Tie My Shoe. Yeah, and then there were some other mixed Asian people involved. Manny Fresh is part Asian. But, but nobody really, I mean, you could guess yeah, by yeah. looking at him, but he never repped it. Kid uh, Fresh, uh, Sean Paul. Sean Paul is part Asian, too, from Jamaica. Um, in rock, Andrew, one of the guys in the Smashing Pumpkins was Korean, actually. Yeah, and then uh, there was this one indie band called Daphne Loves Derby. The the lead singer was actually a Korean guy who, right, from right, Seattle. Right. Um, and then, actually, uh, there's a lot of hoppers in Linkin Park. And, actually, I have a theory, Andrew. That's why when Linkin Park came out, Asians, they would never say it. But I felt like a lot of Asians, also, they like the sad boy feels type music, and they still do. Like, they related to their, like, whole vibe. Right, right, right. Linkin Park is probably one of the top Asian bands, like, liked by Asians, like, period. Right. And then I believe in, what is it, 08? Far East Movement was around, too. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, Andrew, there are a ton of rappers from Asia, obviously. There's a whole 88 Rising thing, and there's still a lot of Asian SoundCloud rappers that have a hit here or there, like Killy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, would you agree with me that there still hasn't been any Asians that are visibly full Asian that have broken... Like hip hop, at least or the mainstream, like none that I would say are definitively mainstream, but there are ones who definitely have good careers, who definitely have millions upon millions of views on the Internet. Absolutely make a living, right? Yeah, like a good living. But yeah, definitely as far as like Billboard, not that many minus the K-pop groups. Yeah, press is half Asian. Um, Central C, Andrew, is actually a quarter Chinese. He does not like to talk about it in interviews, but he sort of hinted at it in the past. I'd like to see him discuss it more. That's maybe, for me. Maybe he needs a few more hits, and then he'll he'll feel comfortable. Um, but on the K-pop and Andrew Blackpink has a new song, "The Girls." I know you're a fan of that one. I like it. I uh, like it. I like new you, jeans you, too. You, you don't like it better than Super Shy, though, right? Super Shy is the is man, the jam. Super Shy is a little old now, man. Everybody's kind of it's a kind of old. Everybody's already playing it, man. I, I might be off the Super Shy. Um, do you think a lot of people thought that Rich Chigga was gonna be the next uh, Post Malone, but it didn't really pan out? 
Because this is sort of like, is the 88 Rising thing a thing or not a thing for 2023? Right. I, I guess it depends. I mean, they're still throwing big concerts, but I guess as far as mainstream validation, it seems like maybe it's it's capped. Yeah, so, um, Andrew, sure. people were saying millennials growing up, they used to follow this K-pop group called H.O.T. If you were really tapped into that, now obviously it's BTS and you can pick a lot from it. Um, I just think there's a lot more archetypes you can follow. You know, people who are really in a subculture, they typically base their style off like a music artist that they relate to the most. But now I feel like there's a ton. Like if you relate to Keshi and you like a sad boy making that type of like weekend sort of minimalistic R&B esque, uh, you might just get the hard part. You know, you might get that part like Keshi. Uh, yeah, I just feel like that there's certain styles. I mean, artists, musicians, they have their own style that's not really fit for like a normal person to wear, like on an everyday basis. You know what I mean? So I think feel like most people are looking to fashion influencers. Oh, okay. I see and there's a lot saying. of Asians in fashion, and there's always been a lot of Asians in fashion, low key, but even more so now. Yeah, I think they're more in front of the camera as well as back of the camera. Back in the day, they were just on the back end on the watch work mechanics. Point number seven, Andrew, representation in print. Back for Generation Y Millennials, there was, uh, these, these are niche magazines, by the way. I'm not saying everybody would know these. Giant Robot, Hyphen, Yoke, Yellow. There was a couple of big Asian American magazines. Then it moved to blogs. And nowadays in 2023, Andrew, I don't even think people read blogs anymore, right? Nah, it's just Neck Shark, Jackfruit. Uh, and then everybody has their own like dedicated like- Subtle Asian blah, 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 internal right? Internal Asian pages, you know? Uh, a lot of Reddit, Discord, Twitch stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Moving on to number eight, Andrew, clothing. A lot of Asian girls used to wear this clothing uh, brand, Bebe. BB, I think. BB, they think would wear BB. that a lot, right? Guys had LA looks, spike hair with the Jinko jeans, orange parachute pants, UFO pants, if they were more of a breaker or into the pop locking world, right? You know, you like to do some some windmills. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, man? I mean, where, where are we at now? Like, I feel like, you know, people are still, they, they definitely didn't go back to those days, though. Nah, I think the shoes have kind of relatively stayed the same with the Air Force Ones, Dunk. Still New Balance. They had New Balance back then too, but they weren't wearing the hiking ones. Adidas Superstars, I still think you can wear them. Um, Do people still, Andrew, chill at arcades playing Dance Dance Revolution? That culture has gone away, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, oh, but, but uh, Round One is a popular arcade brand from the Asian area, and I feel like always a lot of Asians go to that. That's essentially an Asian venue. You know what I see at Round One now, Andrew? People more play the Raving Hands game than the than DDR, which yeah. is more foot-based, right? More, uh, that's kind of a little old school, too. Number nine, Andrew, different subcultures. What happened to hot import nights? Obviously, Asians are still raving in 2023, but it doesn't seem like they're trying to balance a glass ball anymore or do the crazy light shows with their hands. Uh, I think Asians kind of took part ownership of more mainstream events, kind of like how EDC is dominated by Asians now, right? Dominated, but I mean, it's not that Asians make up even 50%. Asians probably make up an overwhelming amount though, but like 25%. But it's, it's even when you 25% hey, Asians is a lot of it's Asians. It's 25, but it feels like 50. Yeah. It feels like 30 or 40% when you go to EDC, but it's probably only realistically 30%. But I mean, that's still a lot of Asians. Yeah, I would say that Asians took the old school light show raving that was actually like kind of ghetto and a lot of people would like die back then. I mean, I, I'm not no saying that people- yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't now, but I think less, but like they almost mixed it with something ultra high end and Lux like expensive in Vegas. Yeah, I yeah. think, I mean, I think EDM is really, I would say overall the Asian party music now. That's it. Yeah. EDM. It's, it's not rap. It's but not but rap. but it's actually particularly, would you say a specific style of EDM, pop EDM, more like uh Yeah, more so like a Griffin, a Porter Robinson, you got a Zoo, those guys like chain smokers. Chain smokers. Um point number 10, Andrew, I do think that uh on dating, Asians were probably more conservative dating back then, but just society was more conservative, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think Asians moved along with the rest of society on this one. I mean, I think kids want to have fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's definitely more dating, more hookups, more everything, you know. But I do think Asians still being raised with generally more traditional values from traditional homes. Tra a lot like of Asians, statistically, maybe not. Lot, like, yeah. yeah, within the Asian community, it's still relatively traditional. Relatively. Right. I knew that it was crazy, Andrew, when uh, I was hearing this story about these like Chinese fobs that like came here for college 
and uh, they like had there was one girlfriend that would go to one boyfriend's house on like Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays she was at another boyfriend's house, and both boyfriends knew about each other, but they just both liked that girl so much. Freaky fob. Hey that's man, a, that's crazy, it's right? Different man. Yeah, um, I mean, Indian, I, I'll say this: Asia, especially China, had its own like revolution, kind of like, right? Yeah. kind of uh, liberation type of like youth dating, you know? Yeah, I mean, my uh, Indian friend told me that even in the Indian American world, which you typically think as like even more like double conservative, yeah. there's a lot of hookups and bookups yeah, and no, all it's lookups. All changing. It's all changing, guys. Everything. Um. Anyway, Andrew. These are all the changes that were just talked about in this Reddit thread. We couldn't get to all of them, Andrew. Overall, I'm going to say this. I think a lot has changed in micro ways, which mean a lot to a community on an individual level. Like somebody who's like 18 could be living way different than somebody who's 38, right? But overall on like macro societal stereotypes, I haven't seen that much movement. Like for, as far it, as Asian Americans like, in the Western society goes. I feel goes. like because generally the Asian diaspora, even the younger generation here still reflects a lot of Asian values. And especially when you compare it to other groups, then they still seem very Asian. So the positioning of Asians has not changed. Right, because you're saying the whole society has shifted. Yeah, like ranking, if you took an Asian now and transported it back then, they might seem yeah. crazy. But since the whole society has gotten more different. Like let's say everybody's positioning on a team has actually not changed, but the team has moved along right. and progressed. But it's not like still the ranking and the order is the same. Right. Asian's still the least craziest of all, probably the races. Yeah, probably Asian guy's still the least desired, but more desired, but least desired, right? So everybody's moved up. Uh, and yeah, I mean, probably, yeah, they're still upholding generally Asian values. Do you think it's a lot more comfortable to be Asian nowadays? Like we said, like the bubbles, like have grown bigger, right? And they're more yeah, nuanced. If you only want to hang out with Asian hipsters in Bushwick, you could do it. If you want to wow. be with the Asian yappies in Midtown, you could do it. If you want to be with the Asian blah, 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 wherever, you could do it. Yeah, there's more knowledge on how to do anything and how to identify as anything now. So I just feel like it's not that growing up as a kid is not more complicated nowadays. I do think life is more complicated nowadays. So I'm not going to say it's like easy, but I will say that I guess the upside is that there's a lot of conversation and a lot more people who are out there on the internet that you can find that are identifying like you. Right. Well, there's a lot more discussions on TikTok and more, I guess I want to say open-ended ones or people are into just yeah. arguing in the comments section. I mean, section. even our channel, I mean, if you want to, if you are having trouble with your Asian identity, like you would just go through the thousands of videos that we have, find something and hopefully, you know, it would help you. Yeah, well, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below of uh, the things that everybody pointed out in this uh, video, but as well as things that we may not have covered. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hop Out Boys. We out. Peace.